Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all okay. I wanted to do a video today just to talk about network radios, which is like a new hype that's going off in the radio world, and just to talk through some advantages and some disadvantages of these radios here. So in front of me I've got three network radios um, which I've sort of amassed over the past six months, and they are really, really good, and they're taking the radio world by storm. Um, and I don't want that to sound cheesy, but everyone's talking about network radios. Loads of people are buying into them, and there's more and more Facebook groups and forums dedicated to network radios um, all the time. Uh, I've got a group. I'll leave a link in the description on Facebook for the Enrico TM7, so feel free to go and join that if you want to know more information and sort of share things around this device. But, yeah, they're brilliant, and like I say, everyone's talking about them, loads and loads of people are buying into them um, Zello is becoming more and more busy with them and IRN on TeamSpeak is becoming more and more busy with network radio users and I'm quite surprised because there was a bit of negativity on the internet around these at the start but I'm quite surprised how many people are actually warming to these now um, as a sideline to radio so I'm really impressed with them, here I've got the RT3 which is a radio that I always use in the car uh, I have this on a cell phone mount on the dashboard, so I use this when I'm mobile. And this uses Wi-Fi and GIFGAF mobile data. The RT4 here is um, a similar device to this. It's just a bit of a better spec. It's more rugged and it's got a better display and it's a little bit faster. Um, I use this at home, so this is my um, home handheld and this runs off Wi-Fi. I've also got data on this should I take it out of the house and then I've got the Enrico TM7 here which is purely a stay at home radio. This stays in the shack and this just runs off Wi-Fi. So already now I've got a mobile, a home and a shack radio built into one Zello network or one Zello group chat where I've got comms, mobile and at home and it's really really handy having a base station and a couple of handhelds in your own private network and it really does cut the cost of using DMR or a repeater um, and I know they're not radio, they are mobile phones at the end of the day um, although mobile phones are technically radios they're not radios such as your Bofengs or some of your um, handhelds from the, the big three like Yesu, Kenwood and Icom and things like that but I definitely think that they do have a place in, uh, in amateur radio and they offer up a bit of a new world of communications, especially for those who struggle with um, radio coverage, accessing repeaters, who live in hilly areas and things like that. Um, this is sort of the next best thing. So I've sort of come up with some advantages and disadvantages to network radio, um, and this is like a, a discussion video, so feel free to jump in in the comments, let me know what you think, um, let me know your spin on, on these devices. Okay, so the first thing, I'll run through the advantages first, uh, in my opinion. Um, firstly, they are really rugged, so they do do the same job as an Android or an Apple smartphone, um, other than that they have a PTT, but they are really rugged. If you drop this, if it doesn't break, great, it's more rugged than your iPhone. Your iPhone is going to break if you drop it, and should this break, it's not costing nearly as much as an iPhone um, or the latest Samsung smartphone would. So the cases that these come in are really, really rugged. I actually dropped this from about six foot onto concrete the other day and it just made a slight hairline crack in the side of the case, but nothing that affects um, the usage whatsoever. And I'm glad that I dropped this rather than my iPhone. So that's uh, one of the advantages. Second one, as I said in the intro, it's another form of communication. So for those who struggle with planning issues for antennas, for those who are in areas where they can't hit repeaters or they struggle to work people simplex, this is another sideline because you can use Wi-Fi to talk to the friends, to talk to people on the amateur radio um, and things like that because these can be interlinked with amateur radio networks which I'll come to in a minute. So this is another form of communications. I use this alongside radio and really, really enjoy it. I think it definitely has its place. Um, it's private, so if you're talking on Zello, it is private. Now, it isn't completely private. Zello or the authorities could listen in on what you were saying, but if you're on radio, anyone can listen in. Even if you're on repeaters, D-Star, uh, DMR, things like that, people can listen in if they have the right parameters. So with Zello, this offers, this network that I have set up here is in one Zello group, and there's only me and these devices that can listen in. So it's relatively private and obviously you don't have to mind your P's and Q's because you're not on the local repeater, which is another uh, advantage. 
Um, they're customizable, so you can customize the displays. There's optional extras for these, so charger bases, um, external microphones, things like that. They're fully customizable. You can customize apps and software inside these because the Android version is open for development. You can also make your own PTT apps should you be um, that technologically advanced to do that. I'm personally not, but it would be something that would be good to do. So they are nice and customizable. You can change all sorts in these. Um, you can change the sounds and things like that um, to, to suit your needs. Um, battery life is a lot better um, in these radios than on your smartphone and on a normal radio. So this RT4 has a really chunky battery inside. The RT3 has a really chunky battery. So that bow thing you see on the desk there behind me, that'll last a day, a day and a half on standby and a few hours if it's being used. This, with full use, will last me four to five days and on standby, these last over a week. Um, so it's absolutely brilliant. The Enrico here needs an external power supply. It doesn't have an internal battery, although you could rig up a battery for it, no problem. But I use a, an amateur radio power supply with this, a three to five amp CB power supply, which gives out 12 volts and that powers this fine. Um, it can also be used in your car cigarette lighter as well, which is handy. So should you want to take this mobile in your car, you don't need to worry about getting a cable through to your battery. You can just put this into the cigarette lighter and it will power it, um, no problem at all. Um, another advantage is that you don't need an antenna with these. So these little antennas on top, uh, more for show really, um, they still function the same without an antenna because the antenna is, is mainly inside. The Enrico here has antennas inside it, so you don't need an external antenna, i.e. a collinear, a dipole, a magma on the roof of your car. You're fully self-sufficient as it is um, with all of these. And if you're running off mobile mobile data networks or Wi-Fi, um, you know, you're not transmitting a radio wave long distance. You go into your nearest cell tower or your nearest wireless um, router, which is really, really handy. So if you have planning issues and can't put antennas up on the back of your house, these are perfect. Um, they also support USB charging underneath uh, these two devices it can be charged via USB so we can charge them off power banks, USB power supplies, laptops, all that sort of stuff and it's really really straightforward. Um, you can have short range and long range communications with these devices because they run in like Zello or TeamSpeak so you can talk from room to room, you can talk from town to town or you can talk to the other side of the world um, as long as you have a data um, or network coverage you're absolutely fine to talk anywhere you like you don't have to worry about propagation or anything like that it's um, just instant communications um, they can also telephone email text uh, they can run facebook facebook messenger whatsapp telegram um, all these ways of communicating so with a radio such as the bowfang there um, you can't do any of that stuff with these you can so it's just an additional extra um, these will all run Echo Link as well, which is handy. So all three devices, you can install the Echo Link app, and you can talk to radio amateurs. So you can talk through your local Echo Link repeaters. Um, that's if you are licensed. Um, you can interface these with radio. So I did another video on this where I showed this RT3 setup talking to a radio. So between a laptop and a few cables, you can actually set this up to talk through a radio network. So you could have. Um, network radios linked in with analog radios a guy actually commented saying he used these in line with his UHF um, repeater that he has as part of his company and it works great so you can interlink them with radio and mobile data which is handy um, they all have cameras well this doesn't but these two have cameras on them which is handy should you need them they're not the most high res cameras you'll ever see on a smartphone but they do the job should you need a camera uh, the Bowfang radio on the side there doesn't have a camera. Um, they can use wireless hotspots and wireless networks. So if you're in McDonald's having a bit of lunch and a, a coffee, you can use this by using their Wi-Fi. It's uh, really, really easy. And you don't need a license. You can pick any of these radios up here and talk through Zello or any of the other PTT apps and you don't need a license. Um, some people put off by taking an amateur radio license. With this, you don't need a license. The only time that would be an issue is if you did want to use Echo Link or you wanted to use TeamSpeak which was linked through a radio network you'd have to have a license but other than that you don't need a license just to talk so if a couple of your friends bought these you can talk to each other on them absolutely no problem at all okay so the disadvantages and there isn't really many um, as far as I'm concerned if you have any more then um, you know by all means drop me a comment it isn't radio um, that's the first one it isn't a radio so you know 
this sort of takes the buzz out of going up to your local hill, putting a few CQ calls out and seeing what comes back. Um, we're aware that they're not radios um, in the sense like a Bofeng or any of the other radios. Um, a lot of people love putting an antenna in, putting some calls out and making that long distance QSO um, or you know making that analog QSO and I'm fully with you on that. For me, they're not a replacement for radio at all. Radio will always be like top spot. These are sort of a sideline. So yeah, although they're not, they're not technically radio, um, I think they definitely do have the place um, within amateur radio. Um, they are network dependent, so if you don't have a mobile uh, mobile data network, you don't have Wi-Fi, these are useless, they're not going to do anything. Um, and I know some people struggle with analogue radio communications due to terrain and things like that, but you know this could be the same. There are areas of the UK where there isn't full coverage on mobile data networks, so you know that could be an issue. I've tested these in sort of urban areas and more rural areas and always had um, no issues at all, but you know should you be out in the sticks, these are potentially going to be useless, so that is one thing to bear in mind. Um, they could sort of damage the amateur radio hobby, um, the more and more people that switch over to these and that are talking on these, uh, those people aren't on the radio. I know a few amateurs that just use Zello rather than the radio, um, so you know it could affect radio, but that's that's subjective and that depends on the on the individual but I don't think it's going to have any massive um, direct sort of um, damaging effects on radio I think it definitely has its place alongside radio um, and there is potentially a cost involved with using these so um, Wi-Fi obviously comes at a cost um, mobile data comes at a cost these use hardly any data at all when you're using things like Zello but they do use data and there is five pounds of credit on all of these um, which is giving me data so it's costing me 15 quid every every few months to, to sort of run these radios um, so there is a cost involved with the Bofeng you know, the only cost you're paying is the is the cost of buying it so yeah that's just some of the advantages and disadvantages guys I'm sure there's plenty more and I'm sure you have plenty more so by all means drop me a comment in the box below let me know what you think um, do you hate network radios are they a waste of time are they a novelty um, this can do nothing more than your iPhone or your Android smartphone can do. Um, are they just a novelty? Are they an overpriced novelty? Um, are they the next best thing since sliced bread? Let me know. Drop your comments in the box below. Let me know what you think. I always enjoy hearing from you guys. Um, what do you think of them? Is it something you'd be interested in? Um, and by all means, put your advantages and disadvantages in the comments below. Um, and that's it, guys. I'll wrap this one up. If you like what you see in this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for more. I've got plenty coming on network radios and I've got some analog radios in the pipeline as well. So make sure you stay tuned for that, guys. And I'll leave that one there. 7 for now and thanks very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.